continue the event, we will invite Professor Eduardo Zancu from University of Sao Paulo to make the second presentation about PSS based on IoT. Good morning, everybody. It's a big pleasure to be here today. I'd like to start thanking uh, all the organizers, so the Aston team and USP team, all the par participants and also the sponsors uh, to, to make this, this happen has been very good workshop and discussion. Uh, my presentation has uh, two parts. Uh, first, I'm gonna describe uh, Innova Lab, which is our teaching experience and this builds on the previous presentation from from Breno so many of the thoughts and the, the idea of integrating teaching to uh, industry relationship and and then to research uh, we experienced here during the last five uh, six years and the second part of the presentation is uh, a particular case a research case that is derived from 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 Innovalab so it was initiated by the teaching experience and uh, is uh, pretty much related to the presentation from Dev Technologia on Monday that you see here, you saw here. Uh, we discussed it on Monday more the technical aspects and I will now discuss more the approach, the methodology aspect. So the, about uh, Innova Lab, I, I could see myself uh, very well pictured on Breno's presentation. I arrived here six years ago, 2009, I started here and I can, it can be considered also an early career and then I'm trying to transition to more research uh, now. And the, the early days, the first uh, effort that I did was pretty much focused on, on teaching and that's what I'm going to describe uh, with the Innova Lab experience. My PhD was on product development. I worked under the supervision of Enrique Rosenfeld in São Carlos. And I finished it after some, some spending some time in the industry in 2009. So as I arrived here in 2009, I got a course, a product development course. And I was assigned to it, to, to teach it. And what we realized on the first time I touched the course is that uh, poly students had access to very good teaching labs. They had access to very good research labs but there was a lack of space to conduct uh, projects. So student-led projects uh, related to final thesis. All of our students, they have to conduct a final thesis on their fifth year. So we have five years uh, engineering course. On the last year, all of uh, Poly students, we have 5,000 students at Poly. Every year we get 800 students, so it's, it's pretty big. Uh, they have to do a final thesis. And this is an opportunity for them to work on a particular project that they have interest on. And there was a lack of spaces for them to go and work on their projects, their initiative, their ideas, and sometimes also for course projects. They had the classes, they used the lab during the classes, but after the class, uh, labs were closed and students have no space to work. So we started developing a concept uh, to transition from a traditional classroom to lab spaces for undergrad students, so pretty much focusing on, on teaching. Uh, you can see on the right hand corner, top right hand corner, the first, oh, what happened here? The first space is, uh, so the idea to adapt a traditional classroom to uh, PBL, a project based uh, space uh, with uh, adaptable furniture. Then we thought about a project room where students could go, meet, use computers, use uh, uh, engineering software without asking for permission, so in uh, opening extended hours, and also some prototyping spaces for, for them to construct and build their ideas, also without needing to ask for permission, having more free access to these spaces. I apologize that this slide is in, in Portuguese, but you can see the, the, so the classroom adapting to PBL, to the project room with meeting spaces, and engineering software, and then the, the prototyping. Room. This was the concept, we got some, some funding, and then we started a, a trajectory pretty much based on, on teaching, also like uh, Brenos uh, uh, explained it. Uh, the first effort was to build a simple but effective infrastructure. Then we started creating in, in, in a group of uh, professors uh, new courses, new programs, and uh, new projects 
that was uh, the, uh, the opportunity to bring more partners from the industry and then to initiate some research projects. And now we are focusing also on uh, researching the teaching effectiveness of some of these ideas, which leads to uh, engineering education research, which is one of the opportunities that we, we saw here. So this picture shows uh, the current state of uh, the lab. Uh, what uh, I, I like to say is that uh, there's not so much funding that is needed to start working on a different teaching perspective. Also, like also Breno uh, s uh, said, I am very glad to have uh, the Breno's presentation before because I think it, it pictures uh, what we felt and what we, what we, we, we did here. Uh, on the top right-hand corner, there is uh, the, the room that we are, have been using for adapting uh, the teaching space for more interactive uh, classes. Well, we still don't have uh, adaptable furniture, so we every class we move the, the, the tables and put the students in small groups. They have flip charts and they work uh, in, in teams. Uh, on the bottom, you see the project room, which is in this building. Uh, it's uh, 50 square meters more or less uh, space uh, for the student that has been uh, 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 intensively used by, by students for different projects. And on the left side you can see uh, two different prototyping spaces. We have now three prototyping spaces. One is more focused on mechanics, uh, the two pictures on the right, and one in electronics and there's another new one in mechatronics. So the lab is uh, nowadays widespread uh, in the poly campus. Uh, some of the rooms are in this building here where we are, but there is an electronics uh, uh, prototyping shop floor on electronics department and a mechatronics department. And the idea is that all the spaces work on the same uh, philosophy of openness and, and facilities for, for the students. This happens not because uh, we wanted to have it widespread in five different rooms, and three different buildings, uh, but because that was the available space and the professors that wanted to engage in this. Uh, but we have uh, an effect that uh, thanks to this lack of uh, having a building, a proper space, we now have uh, a bigger presence in the campus and students can have access to Innova Lab in different uh, spaces. The total space uh, nowadays uh, sums up to almost 400 square meters. One of the biggest spaces is the, the classroom itself that is shared, it's not uh, a novel lab uh, space uh, only. And then we have the project room and the three shop floors. Uh, in Novel Lab, uh, at the Novel Lab, we have been giving students a lot of uh, empowerment and opportunity to create their own initiatives. Uh, at USP, there was uh, a very strong and interesting. Uh, initiative gaining force called NEO, which is, uh, states for Núcleo de Empreendedorismo da USP, or Entrepreneurship Club. It's an entrepreneurship club uh, initiative with uh, grass, uh, grassroots uh, uh, characteristics, so it's coming up from the students. We, we don't uh, advise them very much. There is one professor which is the supervisor, and we try to give them some, some guidance and boundaries to work on. And this initiative uh, didn't have uh, a space to, to work at the university. So no department was hosting or giving space because you know space is very critical in, in every university. And we offered them to work uh, from the Innova Lab and now Innova Lab is their headquarters. So attracting very motivated students is also, uh, I think, key to make these initiatives uh, prosper and, and go ahead. And based on the infra infrastructure, we started creating uh, new new courses. Uh, the first one on the left was the first course that I, I was assigned when I arrived. is a product development course, uh, traditional. Uh, students, uh, based on the tradition of the department, students have to deliver a prototype at the end. We follow a process-based um, uh, frame for this for this course. It has been improving during the years, adopting a more, uh, a more, uh, let's say, uh, more straight uh, process approach. And uh, this gave the opportunity to start a project and to engage in an international experience. And also, like Breno said, the international perspective for the teaching is very important. In 2013, we engaged in a network of universities 
that share a project and students during one whole academic year uh, to conduct a project for a particular, a particular company. So this is based on Stanford M310 course. Uh, the network is called Sugar. It's more or less 20 universities. Uh, groups of four students from one university working with groups of three to four students from another university. For instance, we had one project for uh, focusing on Embraer, four of our students and four students from Stanford in 2013. Nowadays, we are working with a Trinity College in Dublin. We have three students from USP engaged in a robotics product project. And for the next academic year, starting in September, we should work with Linköping University in Sweden. This uh, international experience led us to copy and adapt to a local course, a uh, more multidisciplinary design course. We mix students from different disciplines, different courses. Teams have up to six to seven students. And you can see the graph and colors, the majors that students are doing to engage this, uh, this course. So we have an intentional multidisciplinarity. The, the, the enrollment in the course is multidisciplinary. And the team formation has to follow this rule of at least one student from business, at least one in design and, and architecture, at least one from any discipline from the university, and three from engineering. Another opportunity was a different course, which is taught by André Fleury, which is also taking part in this seminar. Uh, we mix uh, students from engineering and students from the business school of FGV, Getúlio Vargas, which is a, an important uh, uh, business school in, in, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. So the teams are mixed, two and two students, and the focus is more on the business models. Now we are creating a different, a third, a third course material for introduction to engineer first year freshman students, which has been piloted. The pilot started at Federal do Paraná uh, this semester, and there are programs and projects running. For instance, the program from uh, Neo, the Entrepreneurship uh, Club, uh, using the same the same infrastructure. So I think it's pretty much what what Breno said, based on an existing course, make improvements leverage what you have and take opportunity to engage students in different learning perspectives and this bringing companies together and also bringing the international collaboration. And the third effort that we have been uh, promoting now is to uh, try to evaluate these uh, uh, teaching initiatives uh, using engineering education uh, background and theory uh, one of the, the papers that we submitted is under review is a comparison between the traditional development course and the multidisciplinarity course. We uh, use the outcomes that students produced, the reports and the prototypes to compare the level of development of the, the reports in terms of documentation. So traditional process produced in this, in our assessment, better documentation uh, and more detailed one. And on the other hand, we, we compare uh, the disciplines, the, the degree of innovation of the prototypes, and it seems to us that the new course is producing more uh, prototypes with more disciplines, what is also expected because we have students from different disciplines interacting, not only industrial engineering students. Uh, the second research, and also submitted under review, we see that many uh, proposals that students develop during design courses are interesting, they maybe some of them could go to market. The main intention of these courses are, is not to develop products for the market, it's to teach students, but maybe some could lead to uh, further development or interest from the industry. So we started to work with a major hospital in Brazil, which brings ideas for our design courses. And uh, we picked some of the, 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 project, the better projects developed to continue the development after the design course. So students can continue engaged, and they work in cycles of uh, detailed design and go to market, trying to bring the project to a better detailed level so that uh, the, the hospital could ask one of their partners or manufacturers to maybe to uh, engage on producing this, this project. So we started the pilot with 25 students initially. They drop out during the, the program. During, uh, because of many reasons. Some graduate, some go to internships, some go to Science Without Borders, and we measured all the dropout uh, 
the rates and the, 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 the causes of the dropout, and also what, uh, the pro what is happening with the product. So we started with four products, only two using a portfolio approach, only two are in a more mature level. The, the company decided to quit two of the projects. So this was the idea was to produce uh, uh, a framework based on, uh, on the experience. And all this teaching has been the opportunity to develop uh, uh, projects on development and also on research, some examples on medical devices, uh, an equipment to measure the flow of oxygen in hospitals automatically so that it can be charted on, on the top left-hand corner, an equipment to sterilize catheters uh, on the bottom, and we have some uh, work on assistive technology major, uh, mainly on in aerospace, uh, partnering with Embraer. So Embraer brought a teaching uh, challenge for us in 2013 for the Stanford partnership. This evolved to a research project sponsored by CNPQ nowadays, and this evolved also to an industry partnership. So this is the kind of uh, opportunity that teaching focus uh, led us pretty much aligned with the, the presentation from, from Breno. And one of the opportunities created by the teaching was the project presented on Monday by Silvia Take from Dev Technologia. She's a former student from our course, undergrad. She's currently doing uh, her master's with Marli. She uh, partnered with four po three other poly students to create a company focused on IoT design. And she came back to us to have a research project which is sponsored by FAPESP. So the question that we had uh, for this project is how to define which sensors, what we are going to measure on a specific machine from Hockman, which is the partner also involved on, on the project, so that we can advance uh, towards a service provision f uh, by, by Hockman. So the project has different stakeholders. FAPESP is the sponsor. Dev is getting the funding from FAPESP to develop the technology. Hockman is the machine provider being monitored, which wants to go through to PSS. And we are uh, at here at USP uh, focusing on, on the research aspects. So the aim was to propose a method to adopt uh, IoT and to facilitate or to enable uh, PSS. This led to a, a, a specific publication. Authors are uh, Silvia and also uh, Enrique Rosenfeld is one of the authors because we built on previous existing uh, theory and a PhD student that uh, he, he advised. So just to remember the case context, Hockman is a producer of machines to recycle solvents. So the clients and the Hockman clients have two benefits. They can reuse the solvents and they don't need to waste money on the correct disposal of the, the solvent. So they get two benefits. And Hockman is trying to do the pricing based on the benefits that clients have with their machines. So they don't want to rent for a specific period. They rent and they sell machines, but when they rent, they have a dynamic pricing based on the perspective of usage. But they cannot measure the actual usage. If the client says, I'm, I'm going to recycle that much of solvent, they cannot control how much solvent the client really uh, recycled during a particular period. So they want to improve their uh, rental business, uh, being able to control the machine and also to uh, not only monitor, but also to uh, configure the machine to different levels and different types of solvent recycling uh, remotely. So we during the project, we used this uh, research framework, uh, which uh, led to a proposed method in our uh, publication. We start with the available technologies, what is possible to measure with uh, the existing sensors, so what is enabled. And then we go in two different directions, one the product side and the other one the process side. From the process uh, perspective, we use an approach that has been created by an Apollo Barquet PhD, the advised by, advised by Enrique Rosenfeld, and is also uh, 
pictured and described in some of their joint publications, which is called a PSS configurator. So it, it guides, helps uh, guiding the company from the idea of having PSS to a business, uh, a business framework using uh, some of the Canvas inspired uh, dimensions and then helping it to create the value proposition of the PSS, the identifying the partners, uh, the focus and, and the process. This leading to PSS processes. And on, on the other hand, Hockman was very worried about uh, product failures. So we used very traditional failure mode and effect analysis, FEMEA, which is very well established, to identify potential failure that the machine could have when being used remotely by, by the clients. So when the clients took the, the responsibility to set up and to start the machine, and this uh, potential failure indicated what should be measured to uh, avoid the failure. So this was the product, the product side. So com combining the business perspective and the product, so top down, bottom up, we came up to selected IoT technologies to be embedded in this particular machine and identified which process would be more affected. So some of the conclusions of this uh, research was that or that the configurator was very uh, helpful to, to better align technology with uh, the business process. So it's a particular usage from a framework, uh, the configurator that has been created during a PhD. Uh, the, the parallel approach using process and strategy, so bottom up, top down, uh, is necessary because IoT affects also the product. So we are installing uh, new information technology hardware and uh, potentially software on the machines itself. So we are affecting the product, not only the process. The use of EMEA was very uh, uh, well received to identify critical issues by the operator. And we could identify some processes that are affected by uh, this specific uh, uh, approach. So the processes that were affected in, in this particular case were a remote machine setup. Uh, that is now possible uh, with the, the hardware. Uh, all the corrective and predictive maintenance by, by Hockman. Uh, some of the material supply for the customers. Uh, the pricing, uh, so Hockman is intending to change the pricing based on the information that they, they get and the way they charge, so the billing, and also the information reporting for, for the clients. Uh, that's uh, what I wanted to show. I, I'm glad that Breno did the presentation before because it's, it, it's, uh, I, I felt myself very well pictured in this uh, case of uh, starting a career, having to engage in teaching and all the opportunities. I think teaching nowadays, uh, because of the pressure to improve quality, brings a lot of opportunity for us to uh, do interesting things, engage students and then build in this uh, new environment to, to create opportunities to integrate with companies and also to do uh, more research. Thank you.